I want to team up with you guys. What? Why? You do? What? <laughs> what do you say? New best friends? Beautiful. Oh, it's not get all caught up on who lied to whom or which one of us created an entire fake. Mm -hmm. That's ancient history. What's happening until 20 seconds ago? <laughs> I love being on teams. Oh, we need a team name. Uh, name of the episode. He needs us. Why? You keep beating me. Mm-hmm. As a way to torture the four of you psychologically for- <laughs> Sorry, the way that he brushed that away, like, it's just psychological. <laughs> What do you mean, mate? That's the word. Well, it's not necessarily though. It depends, right? But like, it's not not a big deal. Today there was a new development. And really, chat my nips. It did. It did what? A little bit chowder now has the lazy river of chowder. Oh, how did we ever think this was a good place? For real. Vicky thinks that she can run this neighborhood better than I can, and she wants to start her version in thirty minutes. I'm supposed to reboot you, erase your memory. A oh, beautiful team up. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Look, the one thing you can, the one thing you can say about the show was what I was gonna say. Like, it's a terrible show. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing you can say about this show though is it's so fun like it just it comes up with like okay what will entertain people do you know what i mean which is like it's the whole point that's the whole point and i feel like a lot of showrunners don't f***ing ask themselves the question okay they don't you, you can tell sometimes like do you know what i mean and it's fun it's so fun i want to see this right it was getting to a place last episode where i was like where's this gonna go it can only like like i was thinking of all the as you kind of do you're kind of like okay well, we can do this 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 and this those are all uninteresting though those are all the tropes right they go the trope way it's like ugh, it's boring though right and it's like it's your job at that point as a writer to find the fun thing and they have done that perfectly. How are we supposed to team up with you if you wipe our memories? Mm -mm. I'm not going to. You're go Big brain. You're going to act like you've been rebooted. On your own time. You can study ethics, ogle, mailmen. Buddy, you've not thought this through though, because that is going to give the impression that they are being tortured and they're going to be okay with it, which means that it's going to go on for really a, like a long time. And then Vicky's just going to get in touch with Sean and be like, look, this is the truth. And it turns out actually my reality of things is way better because they just got that it's working. I don't feel like he's quite thought this through to the end, which I do feel like with Michael is his weakness. Doesn't quite think it through properly. I tried more than two times. If he finds out we're all in hot water literally mm -hmm. beautiful and i should have seen that coming quicker to be honest because like i knew that the eventuality if this failed was he dies too i knew that i knew that going into this season so i can't i could i could have maybe come up with it a little bit sooner but hey i got i got uh, it counts oh yeah uh, that was uh part of the torture let me uh <laughs> son of a bench <laughs> and this is great because we're what like third episode into season two it's all well and good doing what you did last episode in like quick 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 showing one attempt after the other going into the hundreds it's all well and good doing that but i do feel like you gotta kind of stabilize the season a little bit right because if you do that perpetually you are just gonna not really the audience is gonna lose interest after a while that's the thing you can't always do that it's not an idea that keeps its interest or keeps the interest of the audience like i say perpetually like it, it's not going to do that you do have to establish what you kind of had last season in the third episode of season two it's a good point to find a little bit of stabilization of okay this is what we're doing this season and it's fine if you want to shake that up in a couple episodes or so but you can't just keep shaking it up every single episode because otherwise you, like i say you will lose the interest of the audience because if you change things so much you teach the audience that they can never value anything that's happening on the screen because it's just going to change next episode anyway do you know what i mean so that's why you can't keep doing that and so to stabilize it and keep it actually okay balanced this is what you're watching we're going to have this for a while we've also got the same characters that you knew at the end of last season brought into this season and we're going to go forward with that so it's not like you're losing out on anything you're just continuing where you left off right but between that you had episode one and two of season two really fun exploring the tropey side of the device that they used you had that fun but not in a way that overstayed its welcome it did it it's done and now okay we can get into something and carry on with the story and that's so perfectly executed so far i mean we're in, like right we're in episode three not very far in but they stuck the landing is what I, i'm saying because you know you can do the twist in of season one that's one thing another thing like i say sticking the landing and i think over the course of I mean, I haven't seen this episode yet, but of course of essentially three, two episodes into the bin of the third one, they've stuck that and they've wrung out a kind of all, all of the fun that you could possibly get out of that twist while also getting to a place where, okay, now we're going to go forward and it's still going to be fun, but it's going to be more like a normal 
season that the audience can engage with. I actually found myself in a very similar situation a few years ago, except Michael was Javier Bardem. Of course he was. Stop talking. Thank you. Do not talk again for a hundred hours. That's a long time, dude. We team up with Michael. Yes, Jason, I'm on board. Hot take, but I like your confidence. <laughs> Tell me why. Yeah, good. Ask questions. He has a bow tie. Oh, oh Jason. Shh. Oh, I'm Jason. No. Ah. I always trust dudes in bow ties. Pfft, man, I can't argue with that logic. I hot wired a swamp boat to Daytona and the guy paid me the $600. Okay, right. L l hear me out though. Right, okay. And yeah, I am a little bit invested in this because I am finding commonality with Jason. Shut, the f shut up, shut up. But I'm just saying. These weird turtles in my duffel bag and brought them to Daytona Beach. Right, dude. We all like to think Jason's an idiot. An idiot can't hot wire a swamp boat, mate, to Daytona. Just like, you come on, give him some credit. Do you know what I mean? Like, also, that is impressive. That is some physical. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Pause, but I saw it. <laughs> Come on. This show is so stupid. I love it. But the f <laughs> Sorry. Me. Honestly talking sh I am. I was very well aware it was a bit. I was doing a bit. I sometimes do bits, okay? And then, like, I pause and I just miss. <laughs> But just before I pause, she slaps him full palm in the face. That was such a funny trail of events. I swear to God. I'm just saying that the lollipop flip was very impressive. That's that's my point. That's my whole point. My point is, you always push dudes in bow ties. <laughs> Michael's a liar. I'm just still funny. The second time. This is a trick. There's no way we trust him. Mm, I would agree. I would agree. But I I have more knowledge than they do. I get their suspicion. That's completely natural. But he is in a tight spot. I do believe him. Having said that, he will manipulate that to his advantage and screw you guys if he can. So this is fair. We should ask him every question we can think yeah. of. We shall grill him like the flank of an Iberian piglet. Excuse you. I'm sorry. Has it been a hundred hours? <laughs> How can we possibly trust He's going to say you can't. You can't. Yeah. But you have to. Yeah. But you have no choice. I mean, I wouldn't if I were you. Yeah. It's a crazy thing to do. Yeah. What happens if we don't? Most likely, I reboot you. You figure yeah. it out again. Vicky, yeah. I get punished. You end up spending the rest of it yep. in, the real in the real bad place. Mm -hmm. up to your this is their only way out. I'll tell you what I want to know right now before we go any further. Go on, hit me. The Jacksonville Jaguars won the Super Bowl last year. Oh. <laughs> You're serious. Will they ever win the Super Bowl? Jason, I can't predict the future. Can you not? But no. <laughs> They won't. <laughs> That's rude. Okay, well, I just have like 12 more Jaguar <laughs> questions. No, you don't. <laughs> Do you have something shiny Jason can play with? <gasps> oh. <laughs> How many different versions of this place have we been through? Yeah, what are we, what are we on? 802. Oh, that's not as high as I thought. This current one has only been going for one week. Wow, dude. Boy, you guys barely know each other. That's going to make this tough. Uh, do you think? That's the shortest one. Eight seconds. It was a butt reboot. Michael, was I also rebooted 802 times? Don't ask. Why? Every time a Janet is rebooted, she yeah? increases her social awareness and, no way. and abilities. Yeah? I might be the most advanced Janet in the universe. Oh my god. Good. Beautiful. Janet isn't with you. No. Yeah, she is separate. This one is an actual good place, Janet, that I stole to help. Right. We did establish that, and I've not focused on that at all. That's very important, I feel like, actually. Everyone in the bad place gets randomly assigned a human body. Okay. I love this. More info. I gotta say, it took me a long time to get used to the hanging bits. Look, man, don't think about it. Gross. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter, Eleanor. I was talking about my testicles. <laughs> Hang on. No, 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 no. You're getting gloss over that. What were you talking? What did you think they were? T I was talking about my testicle. <laughs> That's so well delivered. No, the medium place is real. Right. Lies are always more convincing when they're close to the truth. That's true. I crushed a lot of open bar weddings as Eileen Shelbourne. Dude. Even dated a groomsman for a few months, so I had to keep the name. And he got Eileen tattooed on his neck. My guy. How is she and I in the same place? Good question, though. Good question to Hani. At the same time, I would argue that both of you don't necessarily belong in the bad place. But at the same time, if I'm, hey, if I'm talking about, you know, the status quo and what would I create, I wouldn't create a good and a bad place, truthfully. I mean, poor, I mean, that's when you get to a place of like, oh, Tyler, what what would you create? And it's like, poor, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what, what? Come on, dude. Because this, that, that assumes that I know where we go after death. But I suppose, okay, so working in the frame of what we know, at least in the framework of the show that's the status quo that's what happens after you die i suppose working with that this is the yeah good question good 
Tyler, good question, Tyler. <laughs> I'm just asking myself questions to no one. No one's here. Literally, no one else is here. But no, do you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cop out. I'm not gonna cop out because that would be a cop out. Like I should, if I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is, what would I do? At the end of the day, I keep talking about the status quo and how it's not working. And to a certain extent, it's like, well, what would you? put in there if you're saying it's so bad. This is the problem though. Like, I think I have a different world view than they do in, you know, the Bureau, the Eternals. I, I think I have a different worldview than they do. But, you know, I'm coming from a very distinctly human background, right? Because I don't know that I would think of it as like, okay, punishing you or granting you a gift based on how you performed in life. If I'm completely honest, and this is very much influenced by having read the series, the fantasy series, Wheel of Time. Amazon have adapted it recently. Um, I'm not gonna go into it because the, the video is not about that, but I don't like the, the Amazon series. Anyone who does like it, all power to you. I'm glad you like it, it's not for me. Just because it completely deviates from the books and I really, really like the books and so you know it's very it's very integral to who I am I think as a person as I'm going to get into in a second but also who I am as a writer it was a big influence uh, for me my point being um the wheel of time works on a system of reincarnation and so I'm not religious right I would kind of categorize myself this is the thing though I don't really categorize myself as an atheist either not anymore I think maybe if you caught me maybe 10 years ago I'd probably said I was an atheist but nowadays I'd say I believe in a humanity Humanity's ignorance, right? And it's not to say that humanity's stupid, humanity's very intelligent, but also we don't know everything. That's just a fact, we don't, right? Will we ever? I don't know. I don't know if we're capable of that and that's okay like it's not you know a detriment necessarily I mean it's not well it's not necessarily a bad thing I think admitting your limits is fine right I mean if we were never going to get there that's that's always going to be the case but my point is is that for myself at least we don't know everything and at least to my mind we likely will never know everything and also there are I think stories that happen on earth and people telling stories and whatever and you know a lot of them you know I might hear and I'll be like I don't believe that whatever some accounts that I've heard of people because I'm curious right like I, I took an alpha course when I was at university I'll be honest with you because there was a girl that I liked that, that did it and so I, I went and that's that's that, that was my motivation uh, <laughs> you might not know what an alpha course is I don't know if it's a common thing on honestly but basically a, a local church in the city that my university was in it was basically a scenario which I think is really healthy where there were a bunch of Christians and they invite people who are not Christian and it's like question time you can ask whatever questions you want and we'll talk about it right you can ask whatever questions about Christian Christianity you want, challenging as you want, and we can talk about it, and we can disagree, and we can agree, and we can just explore it, right? And, and I thought it was really nice, and I, I really liked it. And so, like, I'm, I'm curious about that stuff. I don't necessarily believe in it. And I, and I think that inherent curiosity stems from this idea that I think there are stuff that we don't know about. And I think I'm fully willing to believe. I'm I'm a big advocate. I, I mentioned Wheel of Time. I love fantasy, like fantasy novels and, and fantasy as a genre is something that I really, really love and, and have done since I was a kid. It was established as a kid and I brought it into my adulthood. And I, I don't think you can quite really be as invested in that kind of genre without being open to the idea that there's something magical Magical. Now, what that might be, I don't know. But I'm, I'm open to it. I think it would be silly for me not to be, considering where I am in life and as an adult and, and what I kind of choose to want to believe in. Right, because and so sorry, I brought up wheel of time because I think that there's an element in those books of the cycle. It's a wheel of time. Like you get reborn into the cycle and the wheel, and you have several lives, and certain people make more impact on the wheel than others, and that's how it goes. And so I think because that was something that impacted me very much as a kid, I I liked that idea of being reincarnated. And I mean, there's different versions of the idea of reincarnation. Right, there's the idea that you might reincarnate as uh, an earthworm or a cat and, and there's, there's this idea of hierarchy in the like living form that you might inhabit when you're reincarnated which I also disagree <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I also disagree with because there's this idea that, for example, if you if you misbehave in life, you'll be reincarnated as like an earthworm. And I'm like, that's better, dude. What, are you kidding me? Life is so much simpler as an earthworm than it is as a, as a human. You pretty much experience so much more heartache and hardship as a human than you ever would or, or could as an earthworm. So like to me, <laughs> the hierarchy of that kind of thing, humanity is at the bottom because there's so much that you can experience and so much out of your control that it 
it's more of a punishment to be human than it would be to be something so simple as an earthworm where life is very simple and terrible things aren't so terrible because you're an earthworm and you don't really care. So there's that kind of thing as well. I think the, the fantastical view of, I'm so sorry, I'm rambling, I am, but okay, it's my video, who cares? The fantastical view that I always took as a kid uh, reading Wheel of Time of reincarnation was like, okay, I get a second crack at the pot because I think when you're growing up, it's like, ah, oh, you know, it's this idea of, you know, immortality or, or mortality more, more specifically and dealing with that and, and coming to terms with that and your place in the world and the idea almost of uh, fantastical reincarnation is appealing because it's like, well, I get a second chance if I screw this one up, you know? And it also gives the impression of like, okay, I am this person now, but who was I back then? It can stroke the ego as well. And you know what I mean? Like there, there's so much you can kind of like draw from, from reincarnation and, and that kind of thing. I truly don't know whether I kind of believe in reincarnation. I'll be honest with you. Sorry, that was a bit of a tease, wasn't it? But uh, I like the idea of it. This is a ramble and, and sorry, this, this isn't perhaps what you believe and that's fair. I think everyone is entitled to how they believe that, you know, we end up or what death brings or what, you know, the circle of life might be or whatever else. That's why we have so much conversation about this stuff. Like we don't know. Look, I have views on religion and, and how it's not healthy and, and how it can be toxic and harmful and it absolutely can, obviously. I'd be remiss by not talking about how, you know, religion can also help, right? And I do think that in a large part, you know, a lot of religions do help. And I think it's very important, you know, when we're talking about this stuff, if you're talking to someone about this, be open to it and to have a conversation about it. Because I think the fact that we don't know means that anyone could be right. And I think it's only ever stupid to take the position of laughing at a person and being like, you're wrong. Because it's like, how did you know? You don't, we all know that, we know you don't. So don't belittle people for it, do you know what I mean? So so sorry, this got onto a track of like, what would I do? And, and, and it's difficult for me to answer because like I wouldn't conceive of this dynamic at all, right? This is the thing though, if I had the choice, would I think of reincarnation is the best thing to do. I don't know, man. Because as you grow older, you, you become more aware of the problems in the world. Do I consign people, if they have a good life, do I consign a person to going back into that and possibly having a really rough time because of the circumstances of their birth? That doesn't seem fair either, right? <laughs> I mean, it might seem like a soft answer, but honestly, the answer that I would come up with would be to abolish the idea of a good and a bad place in the spectrum, right? The two ends of the spectrum. I mean, we've, we've already established Mindy is in the medium place that's real we know that now so why not have that be for everybody and why needlessly I and mean, this is this is the importance of the status quo breaking of what michael's done because he's shown that even people that are consigned to the bad place can improve and get better and once you prove that it means that every single human being depending on circumstance can get better that makes the bad place arbitrary and so it, considering they've already done the medium place which to me is a step in the right direction right i think it's very scary to do something that's different that's new that's going to get the grain and be the person the only person to be like this isn't right we should do something else try something else and that's very brave to to do that if you truly believe in it right i think the medium place is a representation of that abolish the good and the bad place have a place have neighborhoods fine that divide people whatever maybe have it so you examine people in their lives and be like okay well this person would be more likely to perhaps improve or have a positive interaction with these kinds of people or this person this person this person have a system that like analyzes for that kind of thing, put them together and okay, right, life was a bit awful, wasn't it? It was a little bit more random and now you're coming to a place that is less random. That maybe will be the, the, the balance that I would strike because it's randomness, right? That's what we get when we're on earth. We don't quite know who we're going to be born to, what our circumstances, like I say, of birth are going to be. Take that out of the equation. Have a place where we have people and they're coexisting in a way that brings out the best in them. Maybe a certain neighborhood looks, that, looks at that neighborhood for a second and is like, whoa, that that's bad, that's not ideal, that would be the bad place in my mind, but to that neighborhood, they're fine and that's the pinnacle. And so it's like divide the people into places of, okay, community, that's where I'd go with it. I'd be like, community. So, I mean, that's pretty much what I've been saying, but I'd look to put people together in communities that boost them, which again is a certain way of getting around what we have on earth today, right? I think that social media has helped with that as well. I've talked about that before a little bit in the sense that community is so much easier to find 
in a lot of ways with social media, right? Because it's so much more accessible to find people who are of like mind that you perhaps wouldn't find in the real world in your, you know, geographical proximity to you. You might have neighbors that don't understand you, that don't come from the same demographic as you perhaps, or whatever it might be. You can find that online. And so I guess it's, it's maybe that's what you would find in the place. The job being putting communities together that are cohesive. That's what I would do. And, and I would try and think of a formula that would put that together. And that to me would be fair. And it would give all the people in that neighborhood the best chance at being their best selves. Eh. Maybe that'll change as we go through the show, but I'm sorry, I've talked for a while. It is what it is. That's what the show brings out in me. And 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 honestly, the more that I talk about a show, I truly think that's the most I've ever actually paused in a show and talked about it just straight off cuff. And I always maintain the more that I talk about a show, the more that I like the show because I'm engaging with it. If I talk about it, I engage, I'm engaging with it. Here we are. Well done, good place, I suppose. We're running out of time and I am your only option. A lot of guys your age said that to me. <laughs> So far, I haven't heard a single good reason why I should help you. Beautiful. You help me trick Vicky and all those other goons. And? I can get, get you to the real good place. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. There's a way to get to the real- That's not gonna work. It's complicated. Okay. There is a potential method of transportation. Okay. I can get us there. You, Mr. Diabol- Right, confirm it. If I stay in the bad place, I'm doomed. And you take a place in the good place too? How's that gonna work? Take pity on me, I've changed. And all that crap. <laughs> Maybe I can earn a spot too. Will they even let us stay? Gotta be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> This is definitely a trap. I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but you gotta be wary because he's gonna, like I say, he's gonna backstab you when he can. Teaming up with a demon is insane. But I think we have to do it. Yeah, there's no other choice. That's the thing. I spent my whole life trying to learn about right and wrong and apparently I failed. That's a good point. That's really, that's, oh man, that's, that's rough, isn't it, that? His whole life was ethics, figuring that out. And he ended up in the back, oh. Hmm. I failed. I want us to get better and I want us to- What's going on, Tahani? Right, Tahani. I understand nothing. I belong in the good place. Who do I speak to about correcting this? Me, and you're wrong. <laughs> you never cared about the people you were helping. I had my flaws just like anyone else, but I- Which, by the way, I don't think I've really talked about. It's hard to imagine, considering the circumstances she was put in and what we saw last season, how was she supposed to act? Of course a human being put into that kind of situation where she's completely belittled by her sister, not given the care by her parents, you know, her older sister is given preferential treatment as well. She's constantly overshadowed in her life by her sister. That preferential treatment always continues from her parents. She never feels like she's enough. Put a person into that position, how else can she possibly act? I don't blame her for that, right? You put anyone into that position, nine times out of 10, they're gonna turn out that way. Again, it comes back to circumstance of birth as opposed to who she is as a person who, like I said before, we've seen last season was a good person when she was put into a place of, okay, can I help? Should I help? I'm gonna help. You know, in all the reboots, I never showed you how you died. Oh. In case I ever needed to really make you miserable. Oh God. But it's hilarious. Oh God. Of course, I mean, sad. <laughs> Do you want to remember it? Go on. Philanthropist, neck model. Neck. Let's begin with your sister, Camilla. A woman who <laughs> was offered the spot on our cover, but turned it down. She didn't know that. Next week, Camilla will travel to Cleveland, Ohio to become the youngest person ever inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, she's got that her whole life. Any reasonable human would feel the same way Dahani feels. You'd have to rise above to an incredible degree. Like, I'm not saying that someone can't rise above it. I, I absolutely believe that someone can. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, I said nine out of 10, like one out of 10 people, maybe maybe two out of 10 people would rise above it and be absolutely fine and do their own thing. But considering the incredible insistence of this being her life continuously, the whole time, like it's one thing if it's just her childhood and she gets away from it. And I suppose you can put that down to a decision of like Tahani could have chosen to distance herself and just lived her own life. That's fair enough. That's very personal, right? That's just a honey thing. So maybe I guess seven out of 10 people, maybe. But I'm just saying, I do feel like the circumstances do mean that Dahani is always gonna act a certain way and is, or is at least is, is funneled a certain way, right? Which I think is important to take into account. Because I will be in Haiti on a relief mission. Perhaps we should talk more about that. Yeah, you should. First, another question about Camilla. Don't no, sir. She and I would be friends. We have a lot in common. We are both Capricorn and we're both only children. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I forgot about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get, I get, I get, again, it's a caricature, 
I get it. This doesn't happen, but still. Who are you? Really? Yeah, right. I don't really think about you. Oh, uh, you gotta cut her off, dude. Like, Tahani, the best thing for you is to cut her off. I know, is she gonna get squashed by the statue? No. Yeah, that's heavy, dude. They spent some money, trust me. Yikes on that, sir. I died in Cleveland? I don't think that should be your biggest takeaway from that story. I agree with Michael. I dare say on some occasions, more praise and acclaim than my sister. But is it her fault that she's so obsessed with her sister? Do you know what I mean? Like, this, this is my point. This is, this is what this doesn't account for. And it's like, this is why you should chuck out the whole system. Because it doesn't work. It's not fair. So it's like, if you're going for fairness, work out who the people are. Put them in a place where they're with like-minded people. And let them have a community. And let them be happy. Let them, let them have the life that they could never have got on Earth. Because that's not how Earth works. And acclaim than my sister. Mm. Oh, I see. She's realizing. God. Oh, but this is self improvement. But I've always wanted to be perfect at something. I just never thought it would be the perfect stooge. No. That is really mean. We should team up with Michael and all try to build a better Tahani. Yeah. It's not that we don't understand the risks, we just want to become better people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Because you're so much better than me. No. It's no about... Don't lash out at us lash just because out. of your innate no, distrust. It's not about who's innate better. Distrust. I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> but My everyone mind. else is talking and I think <laughs> I should too. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny? Oh, sh I'm Michael. I am Michael. Ah! <laughs> oh, God. Ah, uh, yeah, you shouldn't be laughing. No, you should, though. You should. This is the thing. Alan is too distrustful. She is. Uh, this is this is why she keeps working out. It's the bad place. So it's like, it's not a bad thing, but <sighs> you don't have a choice right now. I'm basically an exterminator, and you're cockroaches. <laughs> Somehow, my very survival now depends on you. Yeah, you messed up, buddy. Or dung beetle something small and gross <laughs> just being honest fair enough hey do you know what, mate an honest michael is what i want perfect okay 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 okay, okay. <laughs> forget about him focus on us beautiful cheetah yes it is our duty to improve ourselves yes he's giving us the best chance to improve ourselves it's kind of true give me a minute to think about it alone she gonna go to the medium place janet hi there yeah call me a train <laughs> Fill it to the brim with coke. Yeah, I top. I just said. You saying Claire's house? I just said. I just said, man. I called it. A bail, huh? Hmm? Oh, and Chidi saw it. <laughs> Say that. This oh, show's insane. Bag. You stuffed a bunch of pillows and. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. I lo oh, I'm having such a good time. I feel like I'm in a game of like the show predicts me. I predict the show. The show predicts me. I predict the show. The show is like actually I've got this for you, Tyler, mate. God damn it! And I didn't see that. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like I'm in a back and forth, man. I love it. I do. You're not my friends, man. We've known each other for like a week. We've been through some version of this 800. Mm -hmm. I don't owe you anything. I gotta do what's right for me. I think there's value in that though. That's they, like, because I've talked about this a lot before, being selfish. I think a lot of people think that selfishness is inherently bad. I disagree. I think selfishness is can be positive. And, and I think it, a lot of time is what you need to live a happy life. Because I think so many people don't think, okay, what do I need? Don't get me wrong. Absolutely, you can go over the line. You can take that too far. And it can absolutely and obviously becomes a bad thing at a certain point. But I think to inhabit a place in the world and be like, okay, well, I enjoy this. This is what my limits are and to make boundaries you need selfishness and i think that's important and so what she's saying right there is i i think completely valid as much as it's coming across as like and i and i don't necessarily agree i think her only choice really i say that though i mean going to the medium place like i say is it, it's outside michael's jurisdiction so she could feasibly do that it's just a question of whether she wants to or could because it's something that mindy would want or maybe she couldn't cohabit with mindy but that's the only question you can come with me if you want i got another mop we can put in the bed go good luck oh and she's gonna stay because he's staying yeah yeah i know i know you i got a couple more questions go ahead how many times in all the reboots did i ask judy for help he refused to help me and then i had to get better on my own never he always helped you really really yep so you need judy you found him confessed you didn't belong asked him for help 
And he said, yes. And then you go better. Now, his agreeing to help was part of my plan. What wasn't part of my plan was it actually working. Mm -hmm. That proves a lot. Pesky little nerd. <laughs> I'm not that selfish. Eleanor, you're a cocaine escape train already. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it! No, that's stupid. Don't. I didn't laugh at that. Shut up. I think there's a 99% chance he's forking with us. I think it's more like a 65% chance, if I'm honest with you. Like, if I. No, you gotta put a number on it. We should help him. That's what Cheaty would do. That's what Cheaty would do for me or for any of us. That's cute. You're talking about me like I'm not here, <laughs> and that just. Makes me feel weird. Oh, God damn it. I do. I do now. I ship Cheedy and Eleanor. I do. I think because of the, the Mindy tape and, and the fact that I know that's where they can get now. And now that I'm seeing that and I'm seeing them interact and it's like, it's not quite the reality of season one. It's a different reality. I am actually shipping them. I do. I see it. They sold it. You got to be on our team, which means the professor over here is going to give us all lessons on how to be better people. Yes. <gasps> Including you. So Michael's getting gonna get better? No, I, I won't be taking any classes. No, you gotta, sir. I'm an immortal being. Mm -hmm. The abilities you can only dream. Yeah. Sit down. And literally the dumbest person I've ever <laughs> <laughs> And who am I? Describe. <laughs> and the second you betray Beautiful. us, I What did I say? What did I say an episode ago? I wanted Michael to improve. And um, the show offering that on a platter of like, we're not gonna just do that organically. We're gonna actually make it a thing and we're gonna make it a fun thing that we can entertain the audience with actively by teaching him. Cheedy, cheedy. Also very important because he's already been established in the audience's mind as the teacher. That's what he does. That's his role in the show. And it's like, so it's hitting that nostalgia too of season one. And it's, you know what I mean? It's just those notes that it's hitting of, okay, that's going to engage the audience. That's going to engage. That's going to engage. Da, 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 da. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, they're, they're hitting on so many points that are just going to engage the audience. So what's it going to be? You're running out of time. He's got to say yes. <laughs> Because that's the interesting choice. How's this for my, oh my God, I'm in heaven face. Not bad. <laughs> oh, I love this. Ah, they got me. This is the, because I, sorry, I, I say that because I'm like, I, I almost don't like liking Michael, but Michael and Eleanor actually kind of getting on. Like these are who they are, right? Eleanor's in the know, Michael's in the know. Eleanor knows who Michael is. Michael knows that Eleanor knows who Michael is as well. It's, it's very, it's, you know, it's complex, but they both know is what I'm getting at. And that's so beautiful because for the first time almost, these two individuals both know and they're interacting honestly. And there's something beautiful about that. And I really like that considering where we're at in the show right now. You like to say a few words actually michael i'd like to sing a few words of course you would hit it oh hello yeah give me a number <laughs> beautiful those little looks between them oh that's gold dust i love that and you feel as the audience you feel so in on it which is so perfect because it's like again it's one more thing that just gets you in and, and demands your engagement and also your enjoyment, which, you know, is a beautiful combination. Okay, so my job is to get drunk and insult people. I love this. I think I can hack that. No. I love this. You to act nervous and embarrassed by Eleanor. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> this is just the same. I love it. Silent, John, you the monk. So <laughs> that'll let us meet each day for Chidi's ethics lesson. How? How? Can I just ask? How? Have they made the show exactly the same as it was last season? And yet it's for interesting it's fun i'm so excited i want to see it i want to see the next episode and yet all they've done is exactly the same but slightly different do you know, do you know, this is genuinely one of the best shows i've seen in a very very long time genuine i mean that genuinely i'm on board for whatever fun little schemes you guys come up with beautiful hey oh that was a good high five dude solid and a robot it's not a robot yep team cockroach no dude this better no 
Okay, considering I went on a whole, a whole thing about what I would do if it was me coming up with the, uh, the status quo. I'm gonna end that straight away just there. But um, what I will say is this, I'm enjoying the show so much. And I think the way that I'm enjoying the show right now is so much more heightened. I feel like the show to this point is built, 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 and to a place now where I'm like, okay, this is the, the my enjoyment of the show. I'm at the peak right now. Like I, it's just, you know, they, they keep doing stuff that just mixes things up and not only that but chooses the best possible thing to make the show the most entertaining and i and i think that's beautiful brilliant um i'll end it there thank you so so much for watching if this is your first video of mine you've watched if you enjoy my work please do subscribe like the video all that stuff links in the description if you'd like to support me further youtube memberships patron down there the exact same thing three tiers um go have a look if you're interested that was team cockroach thank you to those who do support me genuinely thank you thank you thank you but that was all for me Please do watch this video right here to keep the hype train going and help me out with the old algorithms. Other than that, thank you once more and I will see you very, very soon.